<clears throat> Morning. This is Arnie Waters here, Waters Capital in Boston, Massachusetts. Hope you're having a fabulous day. Gold trading around 1715, 1712, something like that. We continue to stand by our viewpoint that you should have increased your gold uh, holdings by uh, 10 to 20 percent over the last couple of weeks. The train is going to leave the station very soon, and the goal will be 2450. Now, as we look out at markets, there are some principles we have to stick by that will give us guidance as to what to buy and what not to buy. Number one, the European situation will not structurally improve over the next 12 months. Indeed, it is our expectation that at least one country in Europe of the significant type will uh, suffer bankruptcy. This is because many European nations are not simply behind on their bills, they are insolvent. insolvent. So as a consequence, it doesn't matter how much money is poured into them. As long as they persist in the austerity programs that they have, their countries can never expand. So they're in a downward spiral, and at some point, somebody's going to get sick of bailing out companies. By somebody, I mean the Germans are going to get sick of bailing out folk. Uh, the French continue to expect that the U.S. is going to ride to their rescue. That's not going to happen. One, because it wouldn't be a good idea. Two, because this is an election year in the United States. And there is no way that Obama is going to bail out Europe, European banks, or anything like that if he has a shot at getting reelected. Secondly, the U.S. economy has gotten better. You will recall that we consistently maintain that the U.S. economy was going to outperform other world economies. This is due to the fact that we actually have products that people want to buy and that we want to buy. So as a consequence, we can, with fiscal restraint being our motto, put ourselves in a much better situation over the next five to ten years if we stick to the path. One interesting comment to note <clears throat> is that the exact same economic policies which are espoused by the Republican Party here in the United States are exactly the same policies which have driven the European economies onto the rocks. So that's an interesting little sidebar. Let's get back to the basic. The basic is the U.S. economy is going to do very well. The Chinese economy is going to limp along, but the Chinese problem is not their economy, its performance or lack thereof. The question is, what are they going to do about getting freedom and getting rich people to stay in China, and, do, and what are they going to do about the awful pollution that characterizes their country? Those three things are the critical issues. The economics are going to be driven by what happens politically, because it is our view that much like we're starting to see in the Soviet Union. Absent a Stalinist level of repression, it is impossible for dictatorships to prosper in the age of the Internet. As a result, we will see continuing, excuse me, we will see continuing strife in China and in Russia. Now on the oil front, it is our position that the Saudis will bail anybody out that needs to be bailed out. In the Middle East, we also see Iran as being a very dangerous place. Now, we do not, it is not our view that we should invade Iran or that we should particularly encourage the Israelis to do anything. But it is our view that the Iranians are troublemakers on a global scale. As you know, and we pointed this out seven or eight months ago, the Iranians have been supporting uh, revolutionaries, terrorists, and troublemakers throughout South America for a while. And I don't just mean Hugo Chavez. I mean they've been involved in terrorism in Argentina. Well, they're not involved. They just pay, pay for it and train people. So, you know, so at some point, the world community is going to have to face the fact that the Iranians are caught. And again, I'm not really expert in what's going on in Asia and the Tamil Tigers and all that kind of thing. But in South America and Central America, including Mexico, the Iranians have been very active in raising heck and creating trouble and creating groups of people and financing them to create trouble for the United States of America. So at some point, there's going to have to be some kind of settling of accounts with Iran. 
And I don't believe that that should be a, uh, a, a war-like settlement. I believe we should continue to crush their economy, which is what the president did the other day when he uh, prevented the Central Bank of Iran from taking any further actions in the United States and therefore in the world banking community. So this is Arnie Waters. Try to keep these big ideas in front of you. Uh, we have a lot of trouble seeing an upside other than uh, – we hear people saying things like it's a trader's market in U.S. stocks. What that means is that nobody has any idea what's going on in the U.S. stock market. And so they're telling you to pick stocks. Well, if they can't pick stocks, why should you be able to pick stocks? So this is Arnie Waters, troubled by the U.S. stock market's rise uh, and uh, because we just don't see big growth in U.S. In US companies other than some of the big techs. And... We view the world as a place that's not going to be all that terrific for U.S. exports for the next four or five, maybe ten years, until these other countries get their economic act together. So let's keep our eye on the big picture, what we call big voodoo, and uh, let's let go of trying to make trades on a daily basis. This is Arnie Waters. Have a super day. Aim for the ice flows, not the open water.